Hello world, it's JWP, J Ward Primo Beats coming to you live from my bedroom. You can check me out on YouTube, JWP Tube, Twitch, JWP Stream, Facebook, JWP Meta, and Patreon, JWP Patreon. Today I will be continuing along with the Synth Edit Help tutorial. I believe I'm on part three. So I'm just finding my screen, there it is. So here I am in Synthedit. I am going to bring up Synthedit Help. <coughs> tutorials and reference, Synthedit Tutorials. Let me get this little pop-out box. I'm just gonna double click the banner and make it full screen. So tutorial three, adding a control panel. So introduction, I'm gonna increase the screen size here. Should be good. In this tutorial, we will show you how to create a control panel for your synthesizer. This tutorial will teach you how to create a control panel, arrange the controls to into functional groups, change the visual appearance of controls on a panel, change the look of the panel using skins, move through this tutorial by clicking the next and back buttons at the top of this window, or by using the table of contents on the left to go to a specific topic or tutorial. So I don't think I was using the next buttons and stuff last time, so we're going to do that this time. Starting out. We have already created a project as a starting point for this tutorial for you. Simply click on the icon to save the project file to your hard disk, then open it and synth it. This project contains a simple synthesizer. Looking at its structure, we can see that it is made up of four main functional sections that really need to have controls on a control panel. I swear the wording in this sometimes. The oscillator section consisting of an oscillator module with a slider and a list entry module green. The filter section comprised of a filter module and two sliders, a blue. The L envelope generator with a, its four sliders, pink. The keyboard module makes up the input section, yellow. This project also has a VCA and sound out modules, but these do not have any controls directly associated with them. So as we can see, this small picture here, we have the oscillator. Um, the filter looks like it's here. Envelope there. And keyboard, of course, over there, and that's the uh, VC keyboard. So I'm going to pop this open. I'm um, not sure where this is going to open. It might open in Synthet at 1.1. Okay. So we got to do a little bit of patching here. Mm, that looks fine. This is probably wrong, which is fine. Uh, at least it's ADSR2. Keyboard 2 and patch, patch Automator can go. Oh, this is all top level. This should be containerized. However, as this is just a tutorial, we'll just leave it as is. Um, let's get this out of here first, I believe. Do we have... No, it doesn't look like we have any patches. Let's, I don't think it's going to show us any. It's all just a scramble. So I'm going to go into the old version, and it still doesn't show us the top level. I'm going to actually take this right out then. So I'm going to drop that. And we're going to go MIDI and preset browser. I think I do believe we do need the patch automator. However, it's not sure if it's an older or a newer one. I don't think there is an old patch automator. This is needed, however, to um, do the MIDI linking, sort of uh, MIDI controllers and stuff linking. And we need the preset browser because that now is where everything like this happens. And I'm just going to quickly throw in a list entry here. So we can, oh, not that kind though. That's a controls version. That's just like a sort of full prototyping. I mean, you can use it in a final synth, but it's better to use the sub controls. And I'll grab this list entry here. Let's go preset and item list. Then we'll have, of course, all the patches. There's different ways of doing this, but just right click for now, we're gonna throw that in there. And that should pop up in the scramble here. I imagine it'll tell us in the tutorial how we're supposed to be arranging that. So we got our starting point, and that was just a quick replacement of the patch automator. Into the next um, section. 
Opening the panel view, since that it has three main views, so far we have used the structure and properties views when building our synthesizers. The final type of view is panel view. The panel view shows only the controls and the structure view that are adjustable, such as sliders without the patch cords or other modules that have no adjustable controls. The panel view lets you lay out the controls of your synth. It's just really big. The panel view lets you lay out your controls of your synth just like a real synthesizer control panel. To open the panel view, right click in an empty area of the structure window, select panel edit. Synth edit opens a new window. This is the panel view for your project. At this time, all the controls are probably just in an untidy heap on the panel. What we need to do is arrange them on the panel so they make sense. So if we come to our synth edit window here and we right click and we just go panel edit. As I said before, it's just everything's kind of piled on top of each other. Let's go into next, arranging the controls on the panel. To arrange the controls on a panel, simply select and drag the controls using the mouse, the same way you do in the structure view. Arrange the controls as shown in the image on the left. You may want to turn on snap to grid, control G, to make lining up the controls easier. You can resize the keyboard on the panel by selecting it and dragging the sizing handle at the lower right. <clears throat> I'm just gonna check my microphone. Microphone, yeah, okay, we're good. Notice the sizing handle on the sides. Notice that changing the location of, the con of a control in the panel view does not change its position in the structure view. I'm not sure where that is. Slider in, arrange. Must be just a typo. Arrange the panel view window so you can see the cutoff slider in both panel and structure views. Adjust the slider in one view and you will see that the control moves in the other view. You now have a nice control panel for your synth. It's a good time to save your work now. Notice that changing the location of a control in the panel view does not change its position in the structure view. Arrange the panel view window so you can see the cutoff slider in both panel and structure views. Okay, so what? Arrange the panel view, view window so you can see the cutoff slider in both panel and structure views. Adjust the slider in one view and you will see that the control moves in the okay. That's what it's saying. So what it's telling me is what I was having a hard time making sense of was that we see this cutoff guy here. When we go into panel edit and we have the cutoff here. If we change it here, it changes there. That's what it's saying. However, moving it around here doesn't move anything there. So I do believe I'm supposed to arrange this, how this is arranged. So cutoff resonance, waveform, keyboard, let's do that. So cutoff, and I'm actually gonna somehow Grab this and put it on top. I'm just gonna slide this all the way across. Let's go full screen. And bring this up. Of course, I buried my cutoff now. Okay, so that's our sort of our patch automator. Our preset browser, rather. So cutoff, um, attack, sustain somewhere in the middle, but everything's in the way. I need a little bit more space, I think. She will come up two, two, one, one. Waveform over here. Um, I don't think these are going to fit with the keyboard. Just barely, I guess. Resonance. And attack. What does it look like? It's quite small on here. So I guess we're just kind of cramming. So let's do some cramming. I'm going to give it a little bit of buffer space or bumper space. Mm, this can come over here. We actually need to make room for that. Bring this down one and over. And it doesn't seem to line up with the grid, so let's get that lining up. Just snatching, snapping each side will align it to grid. And of course, that's Alt G. We can get into the snap to grid here. And apparently, Alt G does that too. Alt G? No. No, it must be an old uh, hotkey that's no longer viable. So sustain is after there. So ADSR, right? Just an envelope. 
S and R. And we'll bring these guys over like so. That's reasonable, I guess. I want one more over. That lines up with those ones, right? But it's still not quite enough space. It's a little condensed. Let's space things out just a little more. room to breathe here and then we will shrink it down to about there Along with the preset browser and we'll expand the keyboard we can expand past just so it looks right however it's fine where it is kind of looks like it's not sitting on top there we go okay so that's a super small synth, one oscillator, cut off resonance for a filter. Doesn't look like the ADSR is attached to the filter. Um, no. However, it does look like our pitch from the keyboard is attached to the filter. So as the... It's on low pass. So then the cutoff adds to it. So as you, you play up or down the filter will, f it's key following. So it's time to save your work now, it says, which is always a smart idea in synth edit. Save, save all the time. I'm gonna throw this right on my desktop. And continuing along with the reading. <coughs> Too much information, hiding the readouts. The control panel for our synth looks a lot nicer than the structure view, but it could look better. Time for a bit of a makeover. Notice how all the sliders have a readout displaying the exact voltage as that they are set to. This is useful to know when we are building a synth in the structure view, but on the panel it's just giving us a bit too much information. Besides, it looks messy. We can turn off the readouts quite simply by using one of the sliders properties. Select a slider, open its properties view, turn off the show readout property, close the property view. The readout is now hidden on the panel and in the structure view. Let's turn off the readouts for all the sliders on the panel. Okay, so it's not as if it used to be. We can access the... Um, this is kind of in my way here. We can access the properties from here. So this is where properties went in modern synthetic and we can access them from both the panel view and from the structure view. But I'm gonna go for the panel view. So they want us to turn off readouts and those will hide our voltage amounts, which I'm not too partial to. I prefer to see where my controls are sitting um, numerically opposed to these sliders. However, I'm loosening up in my Years of experience with music. Uh, it was now hidden on the panel and in the structure view. Let's turn off the readouts for all the sliders on the panel. Okay, there's nothing else in that. Changing the appearance of controls. Our control panel is looking more like a real synthesizer now, except for the, that drop down list. A real synthesizer would probably have a switch to select the waveform. Synth that it lets you change the appearance of many of the controls, including the list entry module. So let's change that drop-down list into a rotary switch. Select the list entry on the panel, open the list entry's property page, change the appearance property to rotary switch, close the property page. The list entry now looks like a rotary switch with all the choices neatly labeled. You may need to rearrange the controls to make everything fit without overlapping. To change the switch's setting, left-click on the knob and drag the mouse. So what it wants us to do here is go to waveform or the list entry. I'm actually going to do this in the uh, structure view just to show it off kind of thing that things can be done here as well. And we're going to head over to properties panel here. Appearance. Right now it's in combo box. We have um, LED stack. I'm not sure. Yeah, that just totally takes over the screen. Uh, LED label stacks. So and now we can see we have like blue lettering here. 
for each one that's selected. And there's a little button here. If we push, well, we can't push the little button because it tacks in the way. Um, horizontal. Oop, no, I don't want that. Don't go back to vertical. I want the list entry a selector. So this is just a button that you see um, increments through the options. Button stack. And now we have a layout of buttons. You can push to select. Rotary switch. This is the one it wants us to use. Uh, rotary, no text. So that's the same thing. However, there's no text. And up, down selector. So now we have a left, right. I don't know why it says up, down, but we do have a left, right. That'll, again, <sighs> increment through the steps. So we want the labeled, labeled button stack. Button stack. No. Rotary switch. And it doesn't look like it does on here. It's a lot cleaner on here. So we gotta make room for it. To change the switches setting, okay. And then to operate it, we just left click and hold and move around. I'm not sure why it looks so much different. So let's do some resizing here. I'm gonna drag this over. And because we now don't have any readouts, we can drag this down. However, we're going to need more down, it looks like. But we'll continue just migrating stuff out of the way. Um, it's kind of crowded. Let's go down one more, at least. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then... Does that ever look not so great? Hmm... One more down, it's still kind of crowded. It looks like triangle is part of that decay label. Okay, now we have a little bit more room for our eyes to breathe. And I want to pull this down to line up with the rotary here. One more up and one more over. Pull this back in. And this out. Drag keyboard out. And like I said, you can extend beyond the boundary of the canvas, sort of thing. Sort of thing. I call it a canvas. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be called. Workspace. Workspace. Panel. The panel. Panel designation area. Anyway, you can drag past it just so like there's not that weird one key missing, looking like a missing tooth. So we've got that happening. And then when it builds, it'll chop that off manually or automatically. All right, so now we have a bit more of a cleaner looking layout, I suppose. Very minimal. Okay, so actually let's reset this back to science fine. Saw, let's put it on saw. Then move to the next area. Sliders in disguise. Sliders also have an appearance property that changes the way sliders look. Let's change the pulse. Pulse lets. Let's change the pulse lets change the cutoff freak and resonance odory knobs. And while we're doing that, let's also get the knobs to do something that real knobs can't do. Show a tooltip, pop up helpful hint for us to tell us what the control is for. Okay, so there's something wrong with the. The writing here. Let's change the. I'm not sure what it's telling me. Let's change the pulse. Let's change the cutoff frequency and resonance knobs. While we're doing that, maybe it's telling me to change them to knobs, I guess, and then add a tool to pop up tip. Okay, select the cutoff slider, open its properties, change the appearance property to knob, type changes the filter frequency in the hint property, close the property page. So we're going to shrink this down a bit and we're going to grab cutoff, I believe. And we're going to change that to a knob. And then the hint is what now? We're just going to copy paste here. Oh no, we just want changes the filter frequency. And go here. Oops, I think I have to enter. So that registers properly. If we um, edit something and go back, I'm not sure that 
it'll stick. So I'm gonna drop that in here and then I'm not even gonna hit enter, I'll just click away. Click something else, jump back in, yeah, see it's gone. So when you're dropping things in like any sort of values, make sure that you hit enter, otherwise they won't um, register. They won't save into the thingy. Anyway, continuing on, close the property page, our slider now looks like a rotary knob. And if we hover the mouse over the knob, it displays a tooltip telling us what the control does. Change the cutoff frequency and resonance slide change the resonance slider to a knob as well. And feel free to give other controls tooltips if you want to. Additionally as well, one thing to really point out here is when you change to a knob and you're using the control, the controls slider. So if we bring in control slider and then we change that to a knob, the response, the default response for these is that classic um, rotary. So it's not left or right or up or down, it kind of goes round and round. So you kind of spin your mouse around the slider, which irritates people who are used to just left and right or up and down. But yeah, that's the rotary response. For the regular controls, like from here, that can be changed in the global text. However, if we bring in a image, image and we have our knob here, right? It's a really small, of course. Um, we do have mouse response here. Auto, I'm not sure what response that is. Okay, that's rotary as well. So when we have, um, you know, images of knobs and stuff, our custom GUI most response, usually I believe it's horizontal, no, vertical. So hor horizontals left and right, we can see this tiny little knob. Um, I can't zoom in either. Of course it has to be the smallest knob. I'm gonna change that straight quick. Of course I have to dig to this to the journey to the center of my computer. I'm not even gonna, yeah, no, I'm not even in documents. Okay, so this is where the computer dumps everything. That's why I don't use this folder, because um, Windows just dumps everything in here. I imagine at one time this used to be a helpful location, but ever since vendors started just dumping everything in here, I've just, I have a different location for my... Where's the... So I have a different location for my documents. Where is the... Oh, because this isn't public. Okay, so I gotta go C users uh, default. Oh no, public. Public, public documents, synthetic projects, uh, skins, and here we go. So here's default, and we want knob. Knob medium. Now we have this knob here, and as I said, it's set to horizontal, so we can go left or right. And if we look at something like it. I just want to see. The default response is up and down. Unless it's a, like a slider, then it should be up, uh, up and up and down. Is it up and down? Yeah, everything is up and down. Is there anything that's left and right? Are there things that are left and right? Nothing really comes to mind. However, I imagine if there is something that's left and right, you'd want it to, to have a left and right response. So up and down is the default, sort of what everybody's used to. So yeah, vertical response. And important, of course, there's rotary. I'm not sure that's what that um, response is, where we go round and round, what the default is. Now, I'm not sure what auto is. Is it just do nothing? Yeah, it just does nothing. And of course, we've got step. So every time you click it, it kind of moves. It's been best for buttons. Clicks. Not sure what that is. Okay, so it's kind of like a toggle. However, yeah, I just wanted to point that out, which is very important for developers to understand and know. Otherwise, you'll have anger issues later from user end user clients if you're a distributor or a vendor or just yourself if you're you build a synth and forget to set that and then you have all your knobs all funny. And like I said, for the default, I don't recommend using the default controls. However, for um, prototyping really quick, like this sort of stuff, you can throw them in there and they're good. Continuing along. So it says to do it for the 
resonance as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Resonance and we'll go knob. Of course, we got to remember that it's a um, rotary response. Okay. I believe we're on to the next one. Okay, so now we have adding panel groups. So before we get into this, I'd like to stress that panel groups is a bit older, quite a bit older of a layout type. However, I do believe it still works. Mm, we'll just follow through the tutorial and we'll find out if it works or not. The control panel is looking pretty good now. Let's add the finishing touches by adding some panel groups. Panel groups are a special type of module that is only able to be inserted on a panel. It provides a graphic border that you use to visually group controls into functional blocks. Right click in an empty part of the panel and select insert controls panel group 2 from the menu. Drag and slice the panel group until it surrounds the envelope generator selects. Envelope generator sliders as shown. Right click on its group title and select properties and open its property view. Rename the panel group to VCA-EN on the panel group to vca Dash envelope by changing the text property. Add two more panel groups called filter and lay out the panels as shown. Once you are happy with the layout, save your work. So it says that you can only get the panel groups from the top level, from the panel view rather. I'm not sure. No, it's not true. So I prefer to drop them in here and then just kind of, you know, stick them off to the side. Because if you do bring them in from the panel group or the panel edit, I mean, they end up randomly here, but if you bring them in here, if we right click here and we go, oh, we can't even, you know, because this is the new synth that it doesn't have that anymore. Or we can just grab and drop, right? And it'll, it'll place it wherever we drop it. However, it just throws it anywhere randomly inside the structure view. So I prefer to bring in panel group from here and then chase it down on here. So we'll grab this guy and we'll bring it up over here. And we kind of want to make it look like this picture here. Got so many things open. I got an extra synth that it opened. No, that's the synth that I'm using, I guess. Uh, no, it's not. It's just an extra one. Let's close that off. Okay. And then we've got to make some space. So let's just grab everything and just toss it around a little bit. Because we're going to be needing to make quite a bit of space. The, the, Group, grouper is quite greedy on space. So like I said, we're just gonna throw everything around. I'm gonna snap this into the corner here. We'll give it a bit of breathing room. How's that look? Maybe one more down. And then it's sort of like, um, it reminds me of RPG Maker. I'm not sure if anybody's ever used it. It's these, you know, like when you build trees or sort of those uh, fancy Photoshop brushes that kind of, uh, they adapt as you grow. And doing a custom line line is, I found really hard to do. So I guess that's why they've kind of gone depreciated then. And they also look like super old synthetic style. However, if you can figure out how to make them look cool, like an, you know, a nice bevel or something, I imagine they could be quite useful. They are also raster too. So, you know, there's no vector group guy, which would be interesting. So we're just going to drop this in here, give it a bit of breathing room. That looks fine. Then we're going to tighten it up around get a bit of breathing room again. Uh, maybe too much. One more down. Oops. Okay, that looks good. And then to rename this group here, we just um, so we have text and group and what are we calling that? Oscillator. C I L A T O R, and as we see, it changes the name. And if we try to shrink that too far, it'll actually look kind of weird, right? So we gotta have enough space for it. Oops. Okay, so now we have the filter section. So what I'm gonna do is head back to structure view, and we're gonna drop another one, panel group. And I believe that's called filter, right? Come on, get over here. Yeah, filter. So we're just going to rename that now, filter. Head back to panel, right click panel, edit, 
full screen. We're going to snap that right beside. How does it look here? Yeah, it's right beside, same height as well. And I'm just going to open it up. Chop these guys in there. Looks good. Drag this over. And I guess we're just going to leave them like that. Yeah, because this is different, right? Everything's looking a bit different. There's quite a bit of margin or gutter. So we'll just center these out. And our last one is an envelope, VCA envelope. So we're going to head back to structure. Copy that, paste it again. Oops. Copy it twice, paste it once. I'm just going to move it somewhere neat and tidy. And this is VCA dash envelope. Right? Envelope. Yep. Yeah. Head back to the panel. Full screen again. And what does that look like here? It's kind of offside. We'll just copy it. So, give it a bit of breathing space. This actually looks like that's fine. And then, drag it, oops, down one, and all the way over here. Just for now. And we'll grab these guys and fit them in. Looks like we have about one. Two, three, four. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And it's actually quite tall. Yeah, this one looks shorter than that one. And it's also tucked. It's quite a bit more tucked. So we'll tuck it as well. Are they also really tight together? They are. And look, their readouts are back. Even after it told me to turn them off. So I'm turning them all back on. Just because I like readouts. And to give this a bit of balance, I'm going to bring it back up one. Bring this up. How tight are they to each other? They're just right beside each other. Reel this in tight as it looks. That should be fine. Yeah, that looks right. And we'll pull this over. Line up the keyboard. Hmm. Oops. Hmm. I'm more preference to having like the whole bottom part of the plugin have a keyboard. So I'm just going to do that like so. And I mean, it looks similar. It's just some things have changed. So, and of course the patch automator. you're happy with the layout, save your work, of course, save, right? Definitely. We'll file save. And yeah. What's next? Change the look with a skin. Congratulations, your control panel is finished. But what happens if you don't like the blue? Simply give it a new skin. A skin is a set of graphics that determine how Synthetic draws, controls, and panels in panel view. Synthetic ships with only one main skin, but you can download new skins off the internet. Check out the file section for new skins. Put your new skin in, for example, C program file Synthetic skins my skin folder, which is wrong. 
the location in modern synthetic is, as I've said before, C, users, public, public documents, synthetic projects, skins. And of course, I have a bunch of development stuff in there. To change the panel skin, open its panel view. If it's not already, then right click an empty space of the panel. Select the new skin from the skin menu. In our case, we use the skin called Profit Black. The panel switches to the new skin. Notice that the structure view hasn't changed. This is because Synthetic always uses the default skin to draw structure views. If you haven't already, go ahead and try out some of the other skins. You can even make your own skins for Synthetic, but we'll get to that in a later tutorial. All right, so we're going to right click on the panel view here. I'm going to go skin and Profit is actually installed by default. I believe just default and minimal PD303 profits, and I guess that's it. So we hit profit and we got a different look. It changes some of it, like the global text is changed. So the way the fonts, the fonts that are selected for some of the things have changed. Um, some of the writing has changed. So yeah, but for the most part, it's sort of the same. Sizing wise, not so much as we have like a bit of space here. It looks like it's bumping into that border. You can also see the groups, structure group, panel group rather, is different, a little bit different. So let's go back to the default here. And it's not as, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's just the mask or my eyes. It just looks a little jagged. Like I said, these are hard to develop and get just right. I have trouble with them anyway. So, yeah. On to the next part of the tutorial. Locking a panel. Now we have a usable synthesizer with a nice control panel. The only problem is that it is very easy to accidentally drag controls around on the panel when we want, the, when we want to adjust them. To prevent that happening, we can lock the views. Select the lock module from the edit menu, edit lock module, or simply click the lock toolbar button. The lock both, this locks both structure and panel views, preventing any unwanted changes being accidentally made to the structure or panel layout. When locked, the controls modules or patch cores in the structure view cannot be selected or edited, and controls on the panel are unable to be arranged, since that it saves the lock status of views with the project as well as the skin that the panel is using. So in the newer version of Synthedit here, we don't have the lock function up here. We do have uh, cut, copy, paste, and delete, which I never use. Uh, we have power. And we have the preset browser, which is empty right now, left and right. So there is actually a way to lock things. Um, right click, it's somewhere here. I do believe it has to be containerized first. So. I'm going to push Control A, and I'm going to right click anywhere or specifically on a module, and we'll go more and we'll go containerize selection. Now we have a synth that is the ability to, um, that has no ability actually, it has no in or out. So, but if we right click a container, we can now go locked, and it's locked. Now we lose our ability to um, change anything if we right click and we go structure we can go inside and now we can't move anything it's strange that we can move things um no we can't can we what if i click and then delete no it doesn't let me let's check out the new view though so if we right click and we hold shift and push structure and we are now in the new view and yeah locks totally got everything totally locked in place here and if we go right click panel edit again we can't move any of the controls or anything and it's funny that it lost its background not sure what's going on there i think it was just because i containerized it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click we also have this little lock here but that's from the old structure view so that's not going to continue into the new one i'm actually going to containerize this again some more containerized selection and now we have you know we'll call this tut synth tut three synth i guess And we'll go in here. And okay, so this is the in and the out. So this is a synth here sort of thing. This is the new view as well. So if I hold shift and double click coming into the new view, and if we click the container, we can we see we don't have that little lock button because this is the new view, right? 
So if we right click, we can go more and we have the locked menu right here. So locked and it doesn't really change the appearance. But we'll go in and it should be unlocked. No, no, it's locked. I just locked it. So right click more and unlock. Okay, so it shows a check mark in the, in the sub menu. And we go in and now we can move things. Or not, I don't know. There we go. It was just being unresponsive. Okay, so what I wanted to do here is right click and go panel. And I want to grab this background here and stretch it. No, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to drag it down from here and over to there. I'm not sure why everything's all funny now. Just realign things. Looks like everything kind of shifted. So let's bring it down. Actually, let's go control E. Bring it down a bit. Line it up with the canvas. And we'll grab it by this corner here. Get that lined up over there. We're going to poke it out a bit so I can grab it on that part. And there. Pull this back up. And that's back to the way it was. So the canvas must is kind of liquid. Where it can be anywhere on the workspace, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, we'll pull it down one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And then, if we lock it, we head back out to the top layer, and we right-click more, locked. And we head back in. I'm just going to double-click, and this gives us the old view. can seem to move things around, but we can't edit. Just delete, try to delete, nothing happened. In the new view, we can't even move things around. Like, everything is set in stone. Same with the panel. The only thing we can change on the panel is the uh, controls themselves. So let's head back to the writing here. As well as saying that when you save the project, so if I save with it's locked, it's going to always be locked when I reopen it. It also remembers the skin per panel. So it'll remember that this skin is for that panel. <clears throat> Summary, well done. You know how you now know how to create control panels for your creations. Lay them out using panel groups to define the functional sections and change the appearance of the controls. You also know how to change the look of the panel using a skin and how to protect your work by locking the views. In the next tutorial, in the next tutorial we will introduce you to prefabs. All right. So I'm going to close this stuff off, head back into Synthedit, and just cause I'm going to finish up this synth. And to do that, I'm going to head into the container and I have the MIDI in. So what I'm it's locked. So I actually don't use locks a lot at all, really. And I find them kind of annoying. <laughs> But I digress, so I need MIDI in here. And this MIDI in, usually we have a, you know, a MIDI to CV. Right, this is generally what we use for synths, for the trigger and the gate and stuff. However, this um, keyboard is a sort of its own type of CV. CV, I do believe this is the old one, no, it's here, keyboard CV. Okay, so yeah, this is um the newer version here, keyboard CV. It looks almost exactly the same. I'm going to see if they are in fact different versions. So we got SE Keyboard 2. Controls XP and debug. SE Keyboard 2, Controls XP. So it looks like they're the exact same guy, SDK 308. SDK3, so I'm pretty sure they're the exact same guy. However, um, this one just has a different name. Like someone, it, it's carrying the old name. So if I went into here and I grabbed the name here like this, and I copied and pasted it here, it would look exactly the same. So it's exactly the same thing, which is a current version. So we're noticing that there is no input. Normally, we would use a MIDI CV, right? And we would go from MIDI in, right? However, the MIDI in here, the patch automator goes to that, and the patch automator 
kind of controls this guy. So it's kind of wireless. That's how, but we have to have this and a MIDI in, otherwise the synth isn't going to do anything. We also have this sound out, so we'll get rid of that. And we'll bring this IO mod out down here and we'll go left and we'll go right. We can have mono, however, it's just best practice to do left and right. I'm not 100% sure what would happen if there was only one output. Close that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncontainerize this to 3 synth. I want to retain that name, however. So we're going to right click and we're going to go more, uncontainerize. And click that container, paste to 3 synth there. And there it's ready to build. I'm not sure I actually want to build it because my check. My FL Studio is so overloaded with VSTs that it takes forever to find new VSTs. And that's not great for demonstration. However, building, I go file, export, VST, Tuts in 3, you know, the stuff here, plug in a synth, um, this other stuff, mono use, okay, output a stereo pairs. Gonna have to experiment yourself to figure out what those do. Oop, cancel, I'm not going to be building that. But I will head in here and go to panel edit and we'll try it out, I suppose. I'm just going to save. Okay, so it's not doing anything. Is there something wrong somewhere? Cutoff is too high. Oh, there's no sound out. Okay, so I'm talking to head into the top level here. Um, you can put a MIDI in and uh, use your own MIDI controller. Say you have a MIDI controller outside your computer. It's hooked up to your computer. You go preferences and then you go MIDI in. And you set that up here and then you can control this synth from you know your midi controller and inside synth edit you don't have to build it you know for testing or whatever and i want input output sound out and we'll go one and two and i head back in here right click panel edit and we should get some sound now um fair warning it probably is just buzzing and beeping so like i said fair warning Doesn't look like it's outputting. Um, probably because I need to do this. So I can't hear that, but it's probably, yeah, it's on the stream. So I'll throw up a saw. Well, then again, you can hear it through my microphone, right? And it's not so brutal. And of course, we have resonance which doesn't seem to do anything. Um, let's drop the cutoff a bit. It's got a bit of a cool sound there. And yeah, so that's a standard one oscillator synth with a filter. The filter is key following, so depending on where you hit um, your notes, the cutoff will increase and decrease. However, there's no envelope to the filter. Um, yeah. So it's just a really, really plain synth. And that's it for this tutorial. It looks like Zane has joined us in chat. It's a live sub GWP, just finishing up the part three of the tutorial. So I'm actually going to take a quick break and then I'm going to hop back in. Um, so that's part three of the tutorial done. I'm not sure if you want to come back for the second part of the zine. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to look at um, pylons and anchors. And I'll save the last part of the tutorials for another day. I'm going to save this. I will throw that in Patreon. I guess this will be part of like the free stuff because it's a, it's a novice. I'm not sure if it lets me do that. I'll have to find out. Anyways, Zane, thanks for dropping by. I apologize for um, heading out right when you show up. But I will be back in like five minutes. Um, I'm going to take a short break. So yeah. 
Thanks for watching and until next time.